Hello everyone, thank you for taking the time to check out my video today. My name is Chris and welcome to my channel Jersey Shore Pondscapes videos. I have a ton of videos on this channel all about koi ponds and water gardens and fish and aquatic plants and pond filters, the whole bit. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you've come to the right place. Um, please take some time, take a look at all my videos. I have them broken down into different playlists to help you find your way around. And um, today we are doing something a little bit different here today, um, but it's kind of related and I think a lot of people are going to be interested in it as well. Um, and that is we're going to talk a little bit about butterfly hummingbirds and building you know, an environment around your pond that's suitable to attract these awesome pollinators, okay? So between bees and butterflies and hummingbirds, um, you know, we're going to talk about how this all fits in with a pond too, okay? Um, so, a lot of my clients are really big into their gardens and the outdoors, right? And, you know, natural um, products for their gardens and lawns and stuff like that too. And I think that this pollinator garden is something that's really important and that we need to do more of because pollinators like bees are slowly starting to decline in numbers um, and we need to provide these bees with <laughs> areas where they can be attracted to flowers and be able to pollinate and spread you know the pollen because if we cannot pollinate plants we're going to start losing varieties of plants as well so it's really important um, you know and I think it's just something fun to watch. I love to sit by the pond and just watch the wildlife. Just see the different animals and insects and birds and everything that come to my pond. Because my pond is more than just a little home for some fish. It's actually part of the entire environment ecosystem, so to speak of your yard, all right? And your yard is part of an ecosystem in your town, okay? And so on and so on and so forth. So it's amazing for me, um, you know, to just sit by a pond and just look at the wildlife that comes to it. The frogs, the dragonflies, right? Maybe a turtle. Um, maybe snakes, um, birds come and drink out of the waterfalls. Like I have morning doves that come and drink out of a waterfall all the time. Um, you know, bees that come down and, and go and drink some water. And it's, it's just really, to me, I, I love that aspect of, you know, building a pond. When I build a pond, I'm, I'm building an environment, you know, for wildlife. I actually have another video here on this channel that I really like. Um, could use some more support, you know, hint, hint. Um, I think it's really cool and it's all about the wildlife around, you know, that your pond attracts. Um, and um, yeah, check it out. Uh, I'll show you a picture of it up here. You know, you can look for it and take a look and, and, and watch that video. So some of the wildlife that we attract can be really good, beneficial to our ponds. Some of it not so much, right? Um, you know, herons and, and, you know, mink and stuff like this that can come in and eat our fish and, you know, cause some problems. But it's all part of the environment. It's all part of life as well. So these hummingbirds, you know, butterflies and bees in this pollinating garden, I, I really appreciate and I really like the idea of that stuff. And I do have a few clients. Um, that have asked me, hey, what can I plant around my pond, you know, to attract, you know, pollinators, the bees and hummingbirds and stuff. So um, I've definitely done some stuff with that. Um, in my own yard, believe it or not, I, I don't have a pond, um, but I do have a bunch of flowers all around the back of my deck and in my yard uh, specifically for, you know, hummingbirds and, and bees and butterflies and stuff. And you know, it's it's pretty cool. So I want to talk a little bit about all this stuff. Um, you know, so hummingbirds are my favorite attraction, okay? Um, I mean, I like watching all the butterflies come too. There's so many different kinds and I, I definitely like that, but 
hummingbirds are very cool. In our part of the country here in the Northeast, they're only here for the summer. Um, they migrate up from Mexico. It's unbelievable. These little tiny birds fly thousands of miles from Mexico, you know, up here to New Jersey and beyond <laughs> for the summers. Um, th that's just awesome in itself. But they're so cool to watch. So hummingbirds are one of the only birds, in, in, you know, that can actually hover. They can fly upside down. They can rotate and spin. Like, I mean, they're just absolute acrobats. Um, in the air um, and it's all due to the way their wings are designed that other birds cannot um, do these things. Um, hummingbirds evolved you know millions of years ago by basically starting off um, eating insects that uh, would you know creep around inside the flowers and the hummingbirds would go into the flowers and eat the insects. Um, eventually over time while eating these insects, they would also get some pollen on them and they would spread the pollen to other flowers. Thus, they started pollinating. Um, the advantage grew um, greatly for the hummingbirds as being pollinators because they're endothermic. They're warm-blooded, so to speak, okay? Endothermic. Um, whereas insects that were doing pollinating are ectothermic, all right, cold-blooded, all right? I hate those terms. My wife's a science teacher. She hates those terms too. They're endothermic or ectothermic, all right? So insects are ectothermic, okay, cold-blooded, which means if the weather's cold, all right, they're very slow. They can't fly very well. They're not as efficient as pollinators. Um, if it's raining out, they cannot, um, you know, fly. Hummingbirds, no problem, okay? If it's colder, if it's rainy, they can fly, they can spread the pollen. So flowers became more and more um, evolved, more and more to benefit the hummingbirds. And the hummingbirds became more and more better pollinators. And I mean, they still eat small insects and flies. It's still important in their diet for some added protein, but most of their diet is a nectar, all right? Now, to attract these hummingbirds to your gardens, right, we need um, feeders are great. And there's certain kind of flowers that they really like. Um, you can go online, you can look in books, you can look it up um, for the names of all kinds of flowers and plants and stuff to attract hummingbirds. I'm just gonna mention a few that I have that they love. Um, one is a type of salvia. It's a blue or purple salvia. Um, absolutely their favorite. There's a picture of it here behind me. They love this stuff. Um, the um, Crocosmia, okay, is another perennial. Um, it flowers in the midsummer. Love it. Uh, cardinal flower, really, really <laughs> great for attracting those hummingbirds. And cardinal flower grows in your pond too, really, really well in your pond, okay? They do like wet feet. So, um, you know, some of those trumpet vine, scarlet runner beans um, can attract hummingbirds really, really, really well. Um, columbine, bee balm, phlox, um, zinnias, um, okay, those are some of the flowers that I have that I see that they go to all the time. Um, as well as the flowers, right, providing a hummingbird feeder is great. Um, and it's really easy to do. You can go buy a nice feeder for, you know, $15 or something, hang it up. Um, you know, something similar to this right here. Um, and you fill it with a combination of a sugar and water. Four parts water, one part sugar, all right? So one cup of water, quarter cup of sugar. Mix it all in, dissolve it all up, pour it into those feeders. The hummingbirds love it. You don't have to go buy these pre-mixes at the store that you know have the red dye in it and all that. We don't need that. Just water and sugar, um, one to four part mixture. They love it, okay? Um, I have five or six hummingbirds here at my house. 
all summer long um, and they're just awesome to watch they become very territorial however okay they uh, they need to feed constantly when they're flying around they are burning a lot of energy their wings beat in an incredible um, you know rate so they are burning a lot of energy a hummingbird at rest their heartbeat is about 400 times a minute okay when they're flying the heartbeat can raise to 1200 beats a minute all right ridiculous like crazy stuff so they need a constant supply of energy sugar okay to maintain that and their hearts actually increase in size when they're flying because they have to be able to pump enough oxygen rich blood from their lungs okay oxygen from the lungs mix into the bloodstream to go to all those muscles in the wings to keep them flying as you know beating as fast as they do it's a pretty incredible thing so they need to feed constantly to survive all right the biggest threat to hummingbirds is starvation all right now with hummingbirds another really cool thing is too um, at night okay they can't feed all night right so how do they survive at night because during the day they got to feed at about every you know 15 minutes they got to feed so how do they survive at night all right well this is really cool they actually go into a state of like I want to call it hibernation almost at night every night their heart beats go from 400 beats a minute down to about 40 beats a minute they are almost in a dormant state they are very susceptible to predators at this time they can't move when they wake up in the morning it actually takes like a half hour for them to increase their heart rate back up to normal and they do that by shivering okay they shiver they start to build up some body heat their heart rate increases and they go back to normal as soon as they're able to fly they got to go get food all right so it's really important that they have these food sources around and being that they need to feed constantly they become very territorial on their flowers and their feeders because they need that food okay so you will often see hummingbirds chasing each other around you know not so much fighting but they chase each other away from feeders and and it's just sometimes it's it's chaos in my backyard watching all these hummingbirds flying around and chasing each other around um, but it's entertaining but you know I have two feeders actually one on each side of my deck so they have room to you know while one's chasing off another one over here one goes and feeds over there it's it's kind of crazy right? they, they go into flowers around my deck too um, so yeah really really cool and the amazing thing with them is like I said the majority of hummingbirds um, species live in Central and South America and there's only a few species that come up north into the United States most of them stay in the southwestern part and in, in you know the mid um, middle of our country but the ruby-throated hummingbird does come up the East Coast, and they are quite common around here in the summer. So usually by you know end of May, mid-May, end of May, you'll start to see the hummingbirds coming back from Mexico, back to New Jersey. Um, you know why why these birds would want to leave Mexico and come to New Jersey? I don't know. I've been to Mexico. It's pretty cool. Cancun is beautiful. Um, so anyway, um, and then in the fall, by mid end of September, they're gone. They all migrate back. Now, some of the states in the southern US around um, Louisiana, um, Alabama, Mississippi, things like that, they actually have hummingbird festivals in the fall because these millions of hummingbirds that are migrating from the north, heading back toward Cancun, uh, Mexico, 
they actually all, you know, come in droves to, to these southern states and people put out feeders all over the place. And these feeders are really important down here because this is their last chance to fuel up and, and fatten up and get all that sugar in them because now they got to fly across the Gulf of Mexico to Cancun to the Yucatan Peninsula. So it's really amazing that these little birds can fly that far. Um, they actually have um, so many of these birds flying over the Gulf of Mexico that they can actually pick it up on Doppler radar and see this mass of birds flying across the Gulf of Mexico really really cool so to have them in your backyard in the summer is a treat it's something it's something pretty special um, you know some of the plants like I said I, I mentioned um, you know they love those plants and they if you plant a bunch of them in your yard if they find them you'll have those you know birds there all summer now butterflies we'll get into butterflies as well very cool, right? There's a million different varieties of butterflies. I have some really cool pictures up here of a bunch of different butterflies. Um, hysop is, is a great plant for butterflies. Um, I mean, they go to just about anything, all right? Joe pieweed, milkweed. Um, there's a ton of plants, you know, specifically for butterflies as well. But they're really nice to have, and some of them are really beautiful and large. You know, the monarch butterflies come by. I have some here all summer long, the big tiger swallowtails. Um, very cool. Definitely, you know, it's, it's observing <laughs> nature around you that I think is so cool. When you just take the time and sit there and watch the different, you know, insects and bees and butterflies and stuff that birds that come around your garden, your ponds, um, it's, it's really cool. So um, definitely, you know, flowers for the bees, the butterflies, and the hummingbirds can add so much more of an attraction into your backyard. So just some things to think about, um, something I enjoy, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in, you know, the hummingbirds and stuff like this, um, on my website at www.pondscapesandmore.com, I have a little heading for wild birds. And in those um, headings, I have a couple little articles about uh, birds and pollinators and stuff, as well as links to um, different products, hummingbird feeders that I've used that I really like and you know stuff like um, things like that for hummingbirds and, and regular birds if you like feeding and you know the wild birds so um, definitely check that out I appreciate all that and thank you very much for watching again something a little bit different today it's not specifically about ponds but it's something that can be incorporated with a pond and it just adds that much more of enjoyment and you know into your backyard so thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support. And hopefully we'll see you back again soon in another video. So take care, have a great day, bye.